What is that? Stilt-legged stone. How can these creatures survive out here among the brine? I'll start keeping notes on their behavior. This tall crab-like creature towers above the brine pool. An unusual assortment of rocks, shells, and bones adorn its back. Uh, let me just pause so we don't keep dying. So that's how it's able to survive in the brine, I guess, by not... By most of its body not being in the brine. It's got huge legs and it just... Its main body is above the pool. Above the lake. Huh. Toxic waters. Not gonna read the description. Don't want to die. I don't even know if you can die in this game, but... Don't want to tempt fate. Pool network. Uh, let's use these. Ah, safety in here. Why is there safety in here? How does this exist? Shed carapace sample candidate. A small, smooth carapace sits between the pools, half sunk in sand. Could this island be a refuge for juvenile creatures? Hmm. That would make sense. Because when those creatures, the, um... I don't remember what they're called exactly. I'll call them sand striders, or... Brine striders, maybe? When the brine striders are young, obviously they can't be big enough to be above the lake. Unless they live, like, on their parent or something. It would make sense for them to grow up in a different place. Young carapace. A stony carapace shed by a creature near the brine pools. Glistening bubble. A creature has shed its bubble crest out on this desolate island. The carrier is nowhere to be seen, perhaps lost to the brine. Oh, another mucus bubble. Well, we have so many of those, perhaps I should use one for oxygen. I'm seeing this creature take dead remains from the brine pool and decorate itself with them. Trophies of shell and bone. Well, that's grim. Is it just a decoration, <laughs> or does it serve a purpose other than being kind of creepy? Hmm, let's go south. Glowing shape. From the small pool at the lake's edge, a pale blue pulse is flashing. I swear I see lights blinking in response out above the brine lake. Brine shell, something we've already gotten. Apparently. Yes, we've already gotten one of it. Brine Inlet. The sand between the pools runs down into the lake. Is this island being slowly swallowed, or is that just my paranoia? Distant Lights. Sounds interesting. Wish I could read the description. Complex pools. Let's uh, use one of these. Oh, we're safe here? Pale rise. This small bank of silt is slowly slipping away beneath the cloudy surface of the brine pools. Blue smears glow faintly on the remains piled on this strider's back. 
Are these bioluminescent creatures or chemical phenomena? Flat rock. A stained slab of basalt juts out of the brine pools, providing a tiny safe zone from the toxic liquid. Glistening bubble, a mucus bubble shed from the back of a creature, sits on top of a small pile of silt, as if it were an egg. Let's... Eh, it'd be a waste to use the mucus bubble just yet. I don't think we're going back into the lake, though, so we should be fine. It's fine. I want to free up a spot. Silt Island. Hemmed in by toxic pools, this small rise looks out across a landscape of deep craters and unrelenting darkness. Sand Peninsula. A thin strip of sand pushes out into the lake, surrounded by toxic pools. Brine Shore. This lake is bigger than any seep I've seen on Earth. The volume of methane trapped in the bedrock must be impossibly vast. So like creature noises we hear occasionally and combined with this music this and how this place looks it feels so I don't know so just ah, I don't know the word for it this is giving me the feeling of looking at things that are very important and large and difficult to comprehend and just awe-inspiring Lake Edge the haze lifting from the lake and the pools all around make visibility very poor. Vague shapes flit in and out of columns of bubbles. Brine Shore. The curve of the lake shore extends out of sight, and the other side of this vast depression is too far out into the dark to be seen. Burning Beach. The edge of the lake is stained with brightly colored bacterial mats, which recede beneath the cloudy, toxic mass of the brine itself. Okay, I think we're meeting up with where we were exploring before. Microbial mats. Among the ornate fronds, I can see the neon orange of microbial carpets spreading out from the pool in complex growth patterns. Party got these. I don't know, I guess I'll use one, sure. Yeah, we could also go up here. Crater strip. Unlike the shallow seep marks in the south, these deep craters plunge through the silt into the bedrock. Oh, these aren't Seep pools? Something impacted the seafloor here. Meteors? But how would they get so deep? Or could some creature have left these? Maybe this used to be exposed. <laughs> Somehow. Silt strip. A thin causeway leads between the pools away from the lake. Cloudy pool. The brine gathers in this small crater like a settled storm. It would be beautiful if it wasn't so toxic. Sandy rise. The pools seem to continue to the north, but why do they stretch so far away from the main body of the lake?
draining pool. Some of these more northern pools are emptying of brine, leaving only shallow layers at their base. Silt strip. The shimmering surfaces of the brine pools that surround me reflect caustic patterns back across the suit's visor. Pool network. Pools like fogged cauldrons model the seafloor. Bacterial mats bring bright smears of color to the scene. Okay, now we've caught up with where we were before. Let's see if I can go more east from here, or if we have to go north. Crater pattern. A radial pattern of depressions in the rock suggests debris expanding outward from an impact point. I'm really starting to think this may have been exposed. I mean, sea levels rise and fall even on Earth, but like, we're 1,500 meters under the ocean. Sandy Rise. The small plain is strangely clear of creature tracks. They must not cross into this northern zone. Disabled ROV? Oh! The ROV must have been attracted by some signal among the pools, but it became another victim of the corrosive brine. One of Manet's ROV, ROV. Looks like this one was disabled by the brine. The supplies Manet equipped with it are still intact, though. We can resupply. Open the terminal and let's see what this little guy found down here. Oh yeah, our power was actually super low. I didn't even notice. Oh wow. You found something big, didn't you, little guy? It looks like... Is that... A wreck? Incredible. The debris field stretches all the way northwest from here. It must have been large. A freighter or a research vessel. We have to go see this thing. Come on, we can head back to base after. Northwest off that way. Well, first, we have a lot more to explore around here, don't we? Sorry, your curiosity is going to have to wait. I don't know where I should go first, I guess. I guess northeast first. Debris field. Whatever caused the string of impact craters, parts of it lie all around. Huge jointed forms of corroded metal. Here's the edge of the debris trail. Something sank here. And by the spread of debris, exploded. It's been here for years. Decades. The metal is corroded to little more than a frame. That means Manet wasn't the first person to come here. Something big happened here. Something no one was meant to find. Yeah, what the hell did they do here? Corroded debris. This huge piece of debris has been distorted and twisted by the brine, leaving it totally unrecognizable. Metal lumps. Bulbous rust-red lumps are scattered across the pale sand like seeds thrown to the wind. Twisted frame. The spars of the frame stick out of the sand like fractured ribs, fronds and other growths closing the gaps between them. Brine Strider. Oh, actually, that was the name I came up with for them, right? I'll call these mournful creatures Brine Striders. 
They're walking lanterns, uh, something that I didn't, re didn't read fast enough. A stilt-legged crab-like creature that clears the brine pools of dead remains, providing a habitat for glowing life on its wide shell. Okay, clearing the brine pool of dead remains sounds better than adorning their body with their victims. <laughs> Fractured plates. The broad, flat plates of the wreck sit at right angles to each other, forming a complex, a complex of angular walls. Silt strip. A curved strip forms a narrow walkway between the pools beside the wreck. Wreck Oasis. A warm glow lights the cracked and corroded skin of the twisted plates in sharp relief. Is this a new creature? What are these petal-shaped creatures? They only grow around the glowing fans. Let's start logging data. Is that trefoil? 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 Trefoil petals which gather around the glowing fans of the deep. They angle themselves towards the light like expectant children. Glowing fan. The fan has tucked itself into the side of a vast corroded plate, forming an oasis in the shadow of the wreck. I think we're going to need more space. So let's use one of these. And then we also have doubles of this, too. Like the fans found in the bloom, these creatures are fan-shaped filter feeders. However, these variants glow with a cold fire. These fans seem to play a central role in the ecosystem here. I'm going to start recording data. Crab-like creature. Each one of these shelled creatures seem to have its, seems to have its own territorial loop. An area of seafloor it systematically searches through. Eaten fronds. Fronds crowd this piece of debris, some eaten away by the local grazers. Broken limbs lie all around. We could sample one of the smaller pieces. Uh. Bristly limb. A piece of a hairy branch broken off from a creature. Could give us tons of power. Let's use it just so we only have... Unique sample of everything. Oh, speaking of, we don't need the sphere fragment. Yeah, I don't need that on me. That's not... We've already studied it a long time ago. That was just for the bloom for oxygen. Okay, I think we're done with the northeast. Whole entry. A split in what must have once been the vessel's hull allows passage into the overgrown interior. Melted corridor. The brine has left everything but the vaguest shape of the vessel impossible to define. We're entering the main body of the wreck now. It's a little more than a husk. It's impossible to tell anything from these rusted plates. Whose ship was this? The local ecosystem looks to have been scraping away at this thing for decades. Nothing much left for us. Oh, 
it's a new creature. These pale, pulsing creatures seem so passive. I'm going to start taking notes on them. These ovoid creatures sit pulsing on the edge of the deep oasis. They're glassy and soft, like partially boiled, shellless eggs. Overgrown Bay. This bay, perhaps once a cargo hold, is being scraped away at by frond-like creatures, releasing flakes of orange rust into the water. Orange rust. That just reminds me of the creatures we saw, uh, the ones with the fans being dipped into the brine pools, and how they were like, uh, they had some red color on them. Could that be rust like could they could this wreck have been here for so long that those creatures have adapted and are utilizing elements of the wreck when close to these creatures you can feel the pull of their strong filtering action as they absorb water and push it through their bodies. Sealed locker. Ooh. Half buried in sand, the industrial seals on the equipment locker have held. It must have been protected from the crash within this bay. Oh, I am so curious. What's in there? Look. A still sealed dive suit locker. Let's see if we can get it open. Okay, I think I can lever... Yes! It's open! But there's not a lot here. Wait. This cutting torch looks clean enough. With a little work, this could be salvaged. Is this by call tech? Hard to tell. It looks compatible with this suit, though. I'll stow it and see what I can do with it when we get back to base. We have a cutting tool, yes! Breached plates. The plates of the wreck buckle and bend outwards here, bent away by some huge interior force. Impact craters. The craters clustered around the vessel suggest an explosive force of some considerable magnitude. Ovoid creature. These creatures seem to produce a small branching, seem to produce small branching buds in the same way that a hydra grows a clone of itself in order to reproduce. Milted debris. Most of the wreck must have already been lost to the brine. Only this section remains, precariously settled on a silt bank. Avoid creature. At this creature's interior sits a sphere surrounded by a reflective membrane, bathed in light from the transparent sections in its body. New species logged lung crest. I'd like to call these lung crests. Those bubbles they carry on their backs are so cumbersome. A shelled crab-like creature which scavenges the ocean floor in search of nutrients carries a mucus-lined bubble on its back. Flooded craters. Could this set of seeps have been created by the wreck's impact? Perhaps it breached the bedrock protecting the methane below. Mm, I don't know if I want to go over there just yet. Let's go up here first. Wreck Garden. Whatever its origin, the wreck here has become a sanctuary for the ocean's life. There is a beauty to its reclamation. None of this adds up. If there's a wreck here, then there were people. And if there were people, well, why doesn't everyone know about this place? About its incredible life? We've spent centuries looking for life outside of Earth and found nothing. 
I've seen so many dead planets, so many barren worlds. I've certified each of them clear of life. Just so an exoplanet extraction core can pick them clean for maximum profit. Strip mine them for the resources our ever-expanding species needs. This place is impossible. One in millions. And yet it's already marked by our greedy fingerprints. Who brought this ship here? This has to be the history Manet wanted to uncover. Let's head back to base. There's more to find, I'm sure of it. Wreck Edge. North of here, the debris field fades away as the ocean floor slopes towards the abyssal plain. Okay, I'm not going to head back to base just yet because we have some unexplored areas, although I don't think very many. Discarded Shell. A crested shell sits on the edge of the brine pool, its former inhabitant nowhere to be seen. We could sample it here. Crested shells. Shells striped with crests found among the brine pools. Okay, so that's it for this whole area, but I think there is a little bit of an unexplored area still. If we go back down and then try to go west. Gotta get out of the wreck first. Yes, over here. Wait, this is terminal available? Sorry, what? Are we... Oh, we're back at the, um... ROV. Crater. Empty of brine, this crater was clearly caused by a large impact, showing radial cracks in the rock spreading from a single point. North Passage. This silt bank allows passage between the two parallel strips of craters leading north. glowing shape. Something is emitting a faint glow beneath the brine. It has the sharp shape of a shell, or perhaps skeletal remains. Ah, brine shell. Something we've already had before. Isolated Oasis. Despite the toxic brine on all sides, this glowing oasis clings to its rock, even as it's melted away. Whoa. Uh, this is unique. Deep pollen. Large floating particles produced by deep sea plants. Yeah, that's an entirely new creature, right? Bright. Oh no, no, we've seen it. Bright fan. Significantly taller than the Bloom's fans, these creatures seem to favor the rocky substrate of the ocean floor's basalt pillars. Pale petals. Each of the wide petals has patterns of stomata and stamen across its surface. And from these, some kind of pollen is drifting out in clumps. Glowing fan. 
precariously seated among the pools, this fan shows signs of decay, its amber waves of light stuttering and flickering unevenly. I think that's it. No more north to go. Let's call back. Something has happened. Come to medical now. Manet's growing. She... I haven't dared to go in. I can't make sense of the readouts. Her vitals are unreadable, but she's still alive. Whatever kept her alive on the slopes is changing her somehow. I've been sat here, watching her. I don't know what to do. Do you think she's in pain? God, I don't know. Uh, no. I hope so. She doesn't seem to be suffering, but then I don't know what this is. There are... procedures. Every base stack is equipped with quarantine systems. I can authorize the lab to be purged. End it now. Is that still Manet? I can't... What do you think? Should I... Authorize the purge? No. No. You're right. That's Manet. I, I didn't come all this way just to... We need to monitor her. Try to understand what's happening here. Thank you. I won't give up on her. I won't be afraid of what I don't understand. We can find the answers together. Okay. We can do this. I've hooked up that cutting torch from the debris field. I hope it helps. I need some answers. Let's find another ROV. Alright, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. God, we've seen and done and, and learned so much. We have a million samples to check out, tons of new creatures, found an ROV and evidence of past human um, exploration here, far in the past. I, I am so curious. Like, I already loved exploring this place and learning about the creatures, but now the mystery has been kicked up like 10 notches. I just have to know what happened on this planet. How have all these people, humans, been here? For a long, er, not for a long time, they're not here anymore, but they were here a long time ago. And yet, nobody logged any of this information? Nobody knew that we had visited this planet and that there was life here? What happened? Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we are going to analyze a lot of samples. Read a uh, crew terminal entry number five and now that we have the cutting tool we're also going to go back over here to try to cut through that metal wall or door or whatever it was to get at that sample <laughs>